Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of the Quirky Inquiry. It's a new beginning of a new year, so we're going to begin this year by talking about a, a topic that I had never ever touched upon before. So I've been meaning to make a video about history for a long, long time now. Because history is one of the areas of study that really fascinates me. Not just because it's history. But history really is the context and the backbone of all the other things that I'm interested in. I'm interested in literature, interested in um, science, interested in philosophy, and interested in poetry. All that kind of stuff, they all are connected together by, by this sort of historical context and by this sort of historical backbone. So whatever literature, whatever poetry, and whatever philosophy that you read, they're not inventions that comes out of a vat in an empty vacuum. They're not just the brain sit sitting in the vat, and then I think therefore I am. Descartes sitting in his room alone. They didn't come in isolation. It's not invented out of a vacuum, as rationalists would like to assume. But instead, it is really history is a product, or rather, the fields of studies that we come into contact today are all products of historical contexts. Philosophers dealt with different problems in the past to a specific history, historical context. Scientific theories are invented in response to a certain paradigm of viewing the world. And then ideas change throughout time. The definition of madness have morphed dramatically throughout the centuries, which is the title of the book, Madness and Civilization by Michel Foucault, which I've been reading for the past week or so. So nevertheless, that is the importance of studying history because it is what brings everything together and it is what gives context to every other fields of studies out there. So studying history comes into supreme importance if you care about being a renaissance person, if you care about understanding what are human beings doing here on earth and then what is our purpose, what is the meaning of all this, if you want to truly understand that history is the way to go down. But the problem here comes, how do you probably study history? How do you probably interpret historical events? How do you relate the events to the significance of the events? And how do you make sense of it all? Because if you misread history, if you read history in a very shoddy fashion, what's going to start to happen is that all you're going to have is a bunch of scattered events in your brain. You can recall dates, you can recall events, you can know what exactly happened, but there's no real cohesion happening. History for you, if you study it in a wrong way, are just going to be a collection of scattered events. Collection of quotes, collection of people, and collection of people's ideas. There's no real cohesion that gives you this awe, this sense of awe that, that it gives you. There's no real passion or nor genuine interest if you approach history in the wrong manner. So, in this video, let me correct that paradigm of viewing history. Let me introduce a new way of doing history that's going to drastically increase Two things. Increase your level of accurate understanding of history, your level of interpretation, and also increase your interest in this area of study because history is sort of a lengthy journey and to study history is to, is to invest in a lot of time. And then the amount of reading that you have to do, it's truly uh, paramount. There's a lot of reading that you have to do to make sense of history, okay? So it's gonna increase two things. Your interest in history and also the righteous accurate understanding. There's a bad habit that we've picked up from school, and this is the bad habit that I sort of disagree with, or this is the sort of doing things that I disagree with within the educational system, which is that there's a heavy emphasis on memorization instead of application. Let me repeat that. There's a heavy emphasis on memorization instead of application of specific facts, specific dates, and specific concepts throughout history. So when a history student when a history student cracks open a history textbook, for example, the American Revolution history textbook, when they crack open that book, there's this knee-jerk reaction for students to memorize things, to knee-jerkly focus on every little detail as possible, to capture every little detail as possible, to try to attempt to memorize all these te technical details, to try to really dig deep into the dates when exactly did something happen, uh, who was involved in it, and who wrote this thing that came to contribute to what influence. So there's a knee-jerk reaction for people when they approach historical studies to find this memorization to be the supreme importance, to put memorization above understanding. So therefore, you have people constructing all sorts of fancy flashcards, 
you have people uh, summarizing notes as they're reading, you have people highlighting every aspect of the history textbook, but at the end of the study, you ask them, oh, um, what is the significance of, of XYZ? All that they can do is to regurgitate the facts without actually offering any critical thinking behind that history. So that's the knee-jerk reaction that we've been wrongly told that's the way to do things. And that's the knee-jerk reaction that we all have when we do subjects such as literature, when we do subjects such as philosophy, or such as history at school. Now, there's benefits to memorization, but let's not put the horse, I mean, let's not put the cart in front of the horse here. There's a different orders of magnitude to memorization, but we shouldn't get the order wrong. Ask yourself, why are you studying history in the first place? Are you not studying history because you want to know the general progression of history? At least based on a structuralist definition, you are spotting a general trend of what is happening throughout time. You're outlining what the humans are doing through that specific era of time. For example, the, the American Revolution. Why did they come to the land? And why is it the case that they start to rebel against the British? You want to know that general trend line and you want to understand the motives, the motivations, and all sorts of historical baggages that comes with this sort of revolutionary sentiment. You want to understand that. That's the core thing that you need to understand. So now what most people do is that they put the cart in front of the horse. When they study history, they worry about, oh, some guy died of, died of a lightning strike in 7083 because he rebelled against the British government or something like that, they go jumping to the specific little details first. They worry about the trees before actually getting a holistic view of the entire forest. And what this turns into is them collecting random facts from the history textbook. Oh, okay, there's a guy by the name of something and he died in the, died in the Boston Massacre. And then in fact, he, he was a man of color. So yeah, that's a random fact that I should document down. Or there's another guy by the name of, there's this French guy from France by the name of Lafayette. And he, he came to America when he was 19 years old. And then, oh, that guy, okay, let me document that fact right, that fact down right there along with the dates. So then this turns into this sort of scavenger hunt of random information. And this also contributes back to the lack of cohesion later on when you face your uh, analysis tasks or source analysis or essay tasks in the future. So instead of collecting random facts, which is a laborious process, and instead of collecting all these quotes that you couldn't really memorize without much context, so that's the problem with collecting random information, is because there's no real context to ground all of these, these information. Your mind is not functioning as a map that maps all of these things together to make you understand it in a cohesive manner. But instead, you're just collecting random pieces of tree barks. You're not exactly seeing the entire forest, but instead you're worrying about the little tree that's in front of you, right? So there's no real context for you to ground any of your facts in. There's no real context for you to ground pieces of information in. So therefore, there's, there's no cohesion in your historical studies. Instead, what you want to do is to gain a holistic view of the entire picture first, lay out the backbone first instead of putting the card in front of the horse, so to speak. So instead of reading every little details of it, you want to gain a very broad overview of what exactly is happening. You want to gain a very broad inspection of the entire scenery. Okay, from uh, maybe 7054, the Seven Years' War. Okay, let me, let me take a look at that. Okay, the Albany Congress or something like that. And you just start from that point. Okay, start from the Albany Congress all the way to the Declaration of Independence. Let me just read through that in a linear progression without worrying about the details. And then what's gonna to start to happen is that as you assemble these informations on a trend line, as you aim to gain a holistic understanding instead of getting bogged down in the details, once the backbone is laid out, then you go back to your minutia. Then you go back to your little facts then the facts will be effortless for you to memorize. Because once you have the backbone, you can just simply attach different facts upon this backbone without much fuss. The problem with the conventional way of picking everything up is that it, it is analogous to if you want to build your Prometheus in Frankenstein. For example, Dr. Frankenstein wants to build his Prometheus. 
The wrong approach is to build the Prometheus from the toe to the head. To start from every little nerve from the, from, from the toe and to build this thing from the ground up without a skeleton. So that's the wrong approach. That's going to take a lot longer. You're not going to know what goes where. And all you have is this collection of scattered information without much cohesion. But instead, Dr. Frankenstein has to lay out the, the skeletal structures first. Dr. Frankenstein has to get the skeleton right before he can attach the nerves, attach the organs, and finally attach the finer details of the skin, of the muscle groups, and finally construct the Prometheus. Right. Similarly with history, you need a backbone before you can put, put up all the minutia first. You need the skeleton, the skeletal structure first, before you can put in all the random little details. So how can we apply this practically? So practically, if you were to read history, the first time that you read a history, history textbook, you read it like a novel, okay? Read a history textbook like a novel the first time that you are approaching it. So this is the importance of pre-reading before classes. Pre-read through the entire chapter without taking notes, without worrying about the little details, without worrying about the dates, but instead pick up, uh, pick up a general trend line, pick up this entire skeletal structure that you're, gonna, that you're gonna later gonna use. So when you go to class, when you listen to your teacher's lectures, now you can begin the process of attaching organs to your Prometheus. You can begin the process of attaching little information to your backbone structure, which you've already laid out in your pre-reading. So after the lecture, then you can start to construct your notes and then taking notes at this point is just effortless because you know what goes where, what's happening, what things are significant whilst others are not, instead of coming in contact with a bunch of information, not knowing what goes where, what is more important than the other and what is worth memorizing and what is not. So this backbone right here is really gonna serve you well. So yep, that's what I have to say about history, very short, not exactly that short, but a very brief introduction into historical reading. Happy New Year and happy holidays. This is the Creek Inquiry signing off right now.